All right, cold spray from the coal here. A little poke. So I, if you notice, I'm going in the metaphyseal area of the phalanx. I've been noticing this and the students are telling me they teach you in school to go back by the MPJ. Like I, I go out here. Mm -hmm. Last little pinch, okay? Yeah, I didn't really realize that until last mm -hmm. month someone else mentioned that. Okay, you're done. How was that? Okay. And then I just roll them on so it'll exsanguinate as it goes on. You feeling anything? You having anything? All right, if you're having any pain, you let me know, okay? I'm just going under either side. start it with a nipper just to get my and it depends every toe is different but I usually start it to get the, the cut um, initiated and then I'll go in with my 62 blade the trick with this is I keep my thumb and um, middle finger on it and then I'm resting my index finger on the toe and I'm controlling my movement with that um, ring finger, not index finger. So hit, you can't get through it. So you need you need to apply pressure. And when you get to a certain area, that pressure decreases, and you could jam in. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. I'm going all the way down, touching the phalanx, and that's it. I always touch the phalanx because if you don't, you could cut short, and when you go to take it out, it rips and tears the proximal matrix under the epinicium, and you'll leave a little piece under there. Sometimes I'll use hemostats. It'll less of a likelihood of tearing like this. There were no hemostats in that pack. So as you can see, we went all the way down. If not, if if you sometimes you can catch a piece if you don't cut all the epine under the epinicium with the nail. And then you'll see little stragglers of skin. Usually those will tear to, to release resistance and come off at the right spot. How are we doing up there, okay? Yep. Sometimes I'll check with my curette. Now, if we're doing, you okay? Yep. If we're doing a matrixectomy, I'll do three, approximate 30 second. And I angle these in. I don't put them flush because you, if you put them flush, you're going to burn more of the nail bed that doesn't necessarily need to be burned and it can end up with a bigger wound. Can you use I don't, okay. no, and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's wrong to use it, but I wanna make sure I'm getting enough of a burn so that these don't reoccur. I was just taught not to use it and I never had any issues with it. Mm -hmm. I don't see any harm in doing it. Sometimes I will put it on if I'm concerned that I have too much phenol in there, mm -hmm. um, but I don't regularly use it. Some people will put antibiotic ointment mm -hmm. around the, the, yeah. the edges so that they don't create any more burning. You feeling it? No. Be the quietest ingrown toenail <laughs> ever done. <laughs> Do you ever see anyone use sodium hydroxide instead of phenol? Mm -hmm. 
The Dr. Fry? Yeah. Okay. There were a few people that did that when I was training, but I, I think all the literature still looks at phenol as the mm -hmm. standard of care. But I, I mean, some people like sodium hydroxide. I know you're not supposed to be around if you're pregnant. Or not, you sodium hydroxide or phenol? Phenol. phenol. Okay. Yeah. 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 Are you pregnant? No. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know if that's what you were referring <laughs> to. No. As I'm like. <laughs> and then I usually, you don't, when you're bandaging it, you don't need to put that much ointment on. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? Oh. In regards to taking the, the tourniquet off, mm -hmm. you could just roll off. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.